Hello and welcome to the studio. I am going to show you the preparation of a Moccolito block uh, for printing today and I just want to talk you through the process. So I'm, we're back at Wastwater and the bit that I'm dealing with is this rocky landscape in the background and I have a block here that I have already prepared. Now this block is going to be a pale grey and it's going to uh, sit under another block. But let me start with explaining. This is a cheap plywood. It's come from a builder's merchant and it's six mil ply. It's the sort of plywood uh, that you might use for shuttering uh, with concrete or in our case we use this to line my studio once it was insulated this is kind of the skin that sits on top of that so it is not a fancy plywood I like it for this because it doesn't make too much wood grain Moccolito is and I'm going to show you some examples later on in this film it can be very sensitive and it can pick up the grain of wood and sometimes that's great in this particular instance I'm not that bothered so I am using this cheap plywood. So this is uh, a block that I have already prepared and I have used a combination of carbon paper and transferring by drawing through my tracing using a carbon paper and roofing bitumen. So if I just show you uh, here I've got a little bit of roofing bitumen. This stuff is pretty nasty. It's for waterproofing uh, buildings. It smells horrible. Um, I always make sure that the studio is very well ventilated when I'm using it because it makes me feel quite queasy actually. It's not very nice. But it does work really well as a greasy substance for Moccolito so that it picks up uh, the ink when it when I come to print. So that's those are the two mediums that I'm going to use to uh, create my print. So in order to prepare this for um, painting a block, painting my picture on to print, I've given it a good sanding. And that's important because what you don't want is any oil on the surface, because any oil on the surface in the form of greasy fingerprints or anything like that is going to pick up printing ink when you get to the printing stage. So I've given my block a good sanding on both sides, actually. Um, you can use both sides uh, in, in Moccolito printing, but not at the same time. Um, Use, use one side of the wood, do that print, get that print done and then reuse the block the other side for a completely fresh print. Because of the damping and wiping and everything that's involved, uh, you're likely to wreck the underside block while you're working on the top block if you use both sides uh, for working on the same image. So here this one is ready to go and I am going to pop that to one side to show you this one here. So this is my darker block and this block is going to sit on top of this background block. Now one of the things that I found difficult about Moccolito and getting used to preparing blocks is the fact that I'm looking at this very dark painted block here and that's going to be a very pale grey. And that takes a bit of adjusting to, but um, once you've got your head around that, it's, it's OK. So now I'm working on the darker block. So what I want to do here, I've traced my carbon, used my carbon paper. And again, you'll need to experiment with carbon paper. It can work really well or it can not work at all. It's Moccolito uh, and I am a novice at Moccolito. I'm going to you know, hands up, I really am a novice at this. My best advice is to do some reading on the internet. There's some really great stuff. Either take a course like I did at East London Printmakers and just run some experiments. So I happen to know that this particular carbon paper here is likely to work. So I've got my carbon transfer there. And what I've also done is I've used um, drawing gum or masking fluid to mask out some areas that I don't want to print. Now this is a total gamble. I 
think it'll be all right and I don't think it'll pick up any ink but it's conceivable that when I rub off this masking fluid it will pick up ink and it'll be a disaster in which case I'll have to do this all again but you know it's all part of the experiment. What I did do was to do a couple of little testers here where I used masking fluid on the wood and then painted the bitumen over that masking fluid and then rubbed the masking fluid off afterwards and that worked and we'll just have to see if it prints but you know we're not there yet so don't worry about that another day so at the moment I have my sanded block with my carbon paper lines on it and now I need to apply the bitumen so I have got a couple of ratty old paint brushes here because they're going to give me nice texture and this is a one hit thing. I don't get a second chance at that. So while I do this, I'm going to shut up and concentrate. But before I start, I just wanted to explain. I'm going to paint the bitumen on and I have my bitumen here and I have diluted it a little bit and I have used boiled linseed oil. This isn't a very fancy one. This is actually for carpenters to oil wood, but I've used the oil to dilute it. You can dilute the bitumen with white spirit, but that may make it work less effectively. And I will show you uh, once this is, once I've applied it, I'll show you what happens if you dilute it too much. I've got a good example of how disappointing that is. So what I'm going to do is to mix my bitumen and oil and check that I've got it at a nice consistency for painting. Let me just put that there so you can see what I'm up to. And I've got some paper here just as a check that I'm getting the right amount on my brush. Oh, that's nice. And I'm just going to work my way around this block and focus on that for a bit. And you'll notice that this is not a very controlled method. I'm sure there are ways in which I could control it better, but actually what I want here is to lose some of those carbon lines and just to get the feeling of this kind of mighty rock face. So I am just going to refer to the other block so that I can see exactly what I'm up to. And I'm not even attempting to stay inside any lines or anything like that. I'm just going with the flow. And then when there are bits that I think I want to ink a little bit more uh, dramatically, I'm going to go back in and just touch those in a little bit more. I'm 
Okay, nearly there. Right, I am going to quit while I'm ahead with that, and so she carrying on, um, and let that bitumen just have time to dry before I try and get rid of the um, gum, uh, the masking fluid. And while that's happening, I'm going to show you a couple of examples so that you can see some failures um, and some successes that I've had. So I'm just going to pop that over there to dry. And you'll notice that I'm working in gloves. Partially that is because the bitumen is horrible stuff and I'm protecting my hands, but mainly that's to keep my hands off the wood so that I don't make any greasy fingerprints on it. So if I start with uh, coming back to these cats, you can see I've got two prints here which are very, very different. And this is how much the inking can affect the block. So um, the number of copies that you, you ink up as well. So here I've got a block where you can see the carbon lines nicely. Let me just move that up a little bit. You can see the carbon lines nicely and we're getting sort of nice variation in the detail here. And then with this one, Everything's picking up nicely, but the inking is much heavier. And you notice that there are some little marks here. Um, so this is fairly early on in the inking, but also I haven't put very much ink on the block. So it's a lighter inking and it's early on in the proceedings. So the block picks up increasing amounts of ink the more you use it. Um, here with this one, I've been much more heavy handed in my inking. So, and also it's later on in my inking up. So the block is beginning to pick up a little bit more ink anyway, but that's not just the cause of these. That, that's also to do the fact that I've been a much more heavy handed with the amount of inking that I've done. And I'll show you me inking in another film um, and we'll come to that later. But I just wanted to show you those two to make you aware of the fact that it's not just about how you apply your greasy substance to the wood. It's also about how you ink the block when it comes to printing. So the other thing I wanted to show you is what happens if you um, use too much white spirit and if you stop your uh, paint printer your painting medium that you're using onto the wood from being greasy enough to hold the ink. So here I have got a block that I prepared for my course with Caroline Whitehead at East London Printmakers and I was so excited about this because Caroline gave us this fantastic piece of wood. This is uh, MDF covered with plywood and I prepared this Scottish scene and I had really high hopes of it and I was using bitumen and I diluted it with white spirit and I got all keen and everything and I lugged this into London to print and when I came to print it this was the result which was not what I wanted at all because as you can see it's right but I haven't got that lovely dramatic sky that I thought I'd, I'd painted in and if I show you here that dramatic contrast isn't there so I just blew it with that one and I wanted to show you one that I had messed up because this is such a sort of experimental touchy-feely kind of process the, I think it's much more about kind of testing and being playful with it than it is expecting precise outcomes. What I'm doing here by trying to combine it with another printing method and trying to do two layers of colour and get it all aligned and get it all printing nicely is actually ridiculously ambitious for a first print. Um, but you know, I thought it would be fun to try. So I'm going to give it a bash. 
So that is what happens when you don't get it right. Or well, one of the ways in which you, you may not get it right. But if I go back to this print now and just check it out, it's virtually dry. I'm just going to have a check there and then it's going to be ready for the next stage in preparing the block. So when I went off camera and we had a bit of a cut, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of texture. And all I've done additionally is to splatter some of the bitumen over this rock face to give me some speckles. And now I am taking off the masking fluid. And to do that, I'm still staying in gloves. Ideally, I'd use my fingers, um, but I can't do that because I'd be depositing grease. So I've, I'm using a, a rag here instead, and I'm just rubbing. And I have to confess, I'm a little bit concerned because it is leaving a stain on the wood, which may or may me not mean that it's going to pick up ink when I come to ink it, but we'll just have to see if it does. But what you can see, hopefully, is that it has kept the bitumen off these areas here, which is where there are falls of much paler gravel on the hillside. So it's keeping that area clean. And I've also put some of it on the rocks as well. So I'm just making sure that I get rid of all the bits of it. I did put a good thick layer of this stuff on um, to make sure that it did its masking and I think I probably overdid it a bit so it's just taken me a little while to get rid of it all. And I'm going to switch to non-slip and make the most of the non-slip to get this last bit off. And I can feel where there is and isn't masking fluid on the wood. So as I'm working over this, I can kind of feel where I need to rub. So we're nearly there. I'm just going to give it one last check and then we can move on to the next phase. OK, I think I've got all of it off now. So the next thing I need to do to get this plate ready to use is, first of all, to make sure that it's completely dry, the bitumen is completely dry, and yes it is, that's no problem, we know that. Um, and the next thing is to give it some talcum powder, so I'm just using uh, baby powder here, because that's what I've got. And I'm just going to put some talc over the block. knock off the excess on the floor. OK, 
Okay. So now the block is ready for me to add some gum arabic to it. And the gum arabic is kind of the magic ingredient here. And I have got some gum arabic that I have made up. You can buy gum arabic in bottles uh, already diluted and uh, art suppliers su usually supply it in quite small bottles. Um, this I bought on the internet. I bought a 500 gram bag of gum arabic powder. Uh, it says it's fit for human consumption, which is kind of irrelevant here, but you know that it was a food stuff. Um, and I have diluted it. Now there is, uh, if you just Google diluting gum arabic powder or uh, mixing gum arabic powder you will find instructions this is a dilution of one part powder to two parts boiled water but they're quite specific about the temperatures you need to have for mixing it so do have a look at that i will put a link in the description to the uh, web page that i used so just open that up and I've got a sponge here. This is just a, an ordinary car washing type sponge, nothing fancy. And I want to give it a good coating of gum arabic. So I'm not going to be shy about this. I'm going to give it a nice coating. Sure. I I'm not looking for having pools of this stuff on the wood. I just want to give it a good coating. So, so now I've got a coating on. I'm just going to take the other end of the sponge and just check that I haven't got any pools of gum arabic, that I've just got a nice coating over the whole block. And I'm just paying attention as well to the edges and making sure that they are covered. So the next thing you need is patience because this needs to dry out really, really thoroughly. So um, it's I would leave it at least overnight to dry. Tempting to rush into printing it, but if you don't leave it for long enough, when you come to print, you'll wash off the gum arabic and you'll just ink up the block and the whole thing will get covered in printing ink. You need a bit of time for the magic to happen. So um, now that's coated, I am going to leave that very much alone and we'll address printing in another film. I hope you found that helpful and um, do cross your fingers for me because I'm still very suspicious about the masking fluid and whether that will print OK or not print, actually, which is what I want it to do. So join me again, uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the studio next time.